MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred has said that he will be stepping down following the 2029 MLB season. And he stated that he plans to have an MLB expansion plan in place by that time, as the manifest destiny of Major League Baseball is expected to come to fruition. That would grow baseball to 32 teams and change the layout of the leagues as we know it. But how does MLB decide where to go? Many cities have cases for expansion. How do we organize and evaluate all of the data that's available? In this video, I'll be introducing my mathematical formula I created to determine where MLB should expand to when the time comes in 2029. The methodology that I use to answer this question is a quantitative approach to collecting, sorting, and weighing geographical and economic data in order to create a formula that will give two suggestions for major league expansion using a form similar to status points that are used in Craig Wills' study. My study will be incorporating models from two different studies, and all sourcing is in the description. The overall procedure is a multi-step data gathering and implementation practice. First, reviewing the 10 bodies of literature and sorting the amount of times that repeated variables appear within that literature. Once the variables were collected, I then took the six variables that repeated multiple times and used them as the factors for the equation that I built. Those factors are metro area population, TV market size, ownership groups, stadium plan, presence of professional sports teams, and distance from other sports teams. Let's go through each factor and discuss how I collected the data and how each one will be weighted. When looking for a city that is worthy of hosting a professional sports team, high population is a correlating factor with success of these entities. However, when looking at the population of a city, it does not quantify the surrounding area by using population of the city alone. Craig Wills' 2021 study implements the usage of metropolitan area statistics, which are defined specifically by the Office of Management and Budget. These areas take into consideration towns and suburbs surrounding the area that affect the city's economy and geographical patterns by adding to the population. For this study, I'll be using the top 20 cities in the U.S. by metro area population that do not currently host an MLB team. The one exception to there not being an MLB team in a given city is for Sacramento, which the formerly Oakland Athletics will be playing in for this 2025 season. So I have decided to include them in this study because Sacramento will once again become a prospective city following 2025. Population as a factor for determination was the tide for the most common that appeared within my literature, appearing a total of six times. Because a large portion of MLB's revenue is received from television deals, the market size will as well be used for determining a city. Baseball is also unique in this area because the majority of games are locally televised and only can be viewed in the local market, as opposed to the NFL where 272 games a year are nationally televised in some capacity. TV markets are sorted into designated market areas, or DMAs, which give the total number of TV homes within a given area. These areas are similar to, but not the same as MSAs from the above formula. Here are the 20 cities DMA size. Riverside, San Bernardino, and San Jose receive asterisks next to their value due to an outlying factor about them. In Riverside, San Bernardino's case, it's because their DMA falls in the middle ground between Los Angeles, the second largest DMA in America, and the Peoria Bloomington DMA. Because the DMA size for Los Angeles is larger than Riverside, San Bernardino's metro area population, I'll be using the Peoria Bloomington for a more accurate representation. In San Jose's case, their DMA falls inside of the same one as San Francisco and Oakland, which holds another team in the Giants. However, this confounding variable will be weighted and explained with a value of four, despite appearing in the literature a total of six times. We'll go over that later in the weight section. The TV market shows a more economic approach to population, as the revenue that can be generated from deals is solely dependent on the amount of people watching. In some cases, such as the New York Yankees, the television station is owned by the team, which gives even more importance to the DMA rankings, because contractual money is not there for that team. Because of the confounding that appears in two cases for the prospective cities within the DMA borders, distance from other major league teams will also be taken into account. It appeared in the literature two times. The values will be quantified in miles and will receive an equal weight as TV market with a value of four. This will be calculated by inputting the city's distance from the nearest major league stadium on Google Maps. One of the variables that is not able to be quantified in a raw sense that appeared many times within the literature was the presence of an ownership group plan being in place. However, as a yes-no question, there's no numerical value that can be assigned to that. The way that I'll be quantifying this is using a method used in Evan Opperman's study in which dummy variables were used. Dummy variables are a way that qualitative data is able to be quantified by assigning a numerical value to the presence of a variable, and a value of zero if the variable is vacant from the city. For this case, ownership groups appeared five times in literature and will receive a weight of five. 
To answer this question for each individual city, I'll be using Bradford Doolittle's article, ESPN in 2024, which goes over if there's an ownership thought or plan in place. While some of the other cities included in my study were not included in the article, they're not known to have organizations pushing for teams, as Doolittle explored cities that have some sort of group doing so. Similar to the above idea about ownership groups, stadium plan is another variable that will need to use Evan Opperman's dummy system. In the same article by Doolittle, a stadium plan is also discussed for the prospective cities. The cities that had a stadium plan in place were Portland, Raleigh, San Jose, and Salt Lake City. Because these cities are unique to the others in this way, it will be included in the formula with a weight of four. Stadium plans being in place has been a major selling point for MLB when looking for cases of expansion in the past, which is why it is included in the four bodies of literature for this study. The final variable that will be used is a multi-step system that will follow similarly to the weighting system used in the weight section of the overall study. The presence of other professional sports teams appeared only two times in literature. However, some of the most significant correlations were seen when the idea showed itself. In Craig Wills' study, he showed a high correlation of 85% of MLB cities having an NFL team in the city as well. So within this variable, I will be using a simplified short version of the weighting system to determine the significance of professional sports teams. The equation shown on the screen is the formula that will be used for this variable. The variable pro is the value that we are trying to find, while each league is represented by the name of itself in the formula, with a coefficient 2 out in front of the NFL. Because the variables discussed cannot all be weighted with equal importance, I will be using the amount of times that the variables appeared in the bodies of literature to determine how much weight each will hold relative to the other variables. Each factor will receive a value FAC, which is equivalent to the amount of times that they were mentioned in the literature, with exception to two variables that have confounding as discussed in their individual sections. These variables are TV market and distance from other MLB teams. The hierarchy of the value of variables is as follows. The values have been reduced so that the least weighted variable has a value of 1. The way to weight each value to each other is to now take the FAC value of each and compare it to the lowest value. The way to establish these coefficients is using the following formula on the screen now. The variable coefficient is the value being calculated in the formula. Max variable is the maximum number that that given variable can be. FAC is a factor value shown in the table before, and the 4 in the equation represents the maximum value of FAC for the least weighted variable pro presence. This makes it so that each variable is able to give a maximum value that aligns with the weight. The coefficients being used in the formula are on the screen now. Because of the dummy variables, stadium plan and ownership needing to be assigned a maximum value, they receive a coefficient value of 1, because there are only two possible values for these two variables. To calculate their values that will be added to the formula, we will reverse the equation where max variable is now the unknown value and coefficient is equal to 1. So, now that the coefficients are all calculated to set in front of the six variables, the final formula for determining the two expansion teams is on the screen now with an output labeled location. To give a clear interpretation of the output value, the output will be adjusted to a 100 or plus scale that is used in baseball metrics in today's game. It's a similar model to the one used for OPS plus, where any additional integer above or below 100 represents a 1% deviation away from the average of the value. The final output and results of the study are on the screen now, and the results will surprise you. Despite San Jose being so close to San Francisco, they still are the number one recommendation for Major League Baseball expansion, followed by Salt Lake City and Portland. However, MLB will likely be putting a team in each of the regions, east and west, so we must take one city from each region to implement in the system. Therefore, taking the highest eastern city as the number two option is the conclusion for this study, that being Raleigh, North Carolina, and in the west, San Jose, California. Putting teams into these two cities will be very smooth as they both possess plans for stadiums and ownership that give them cases unlike any others. As MLB looks towards future expansion, using this formula gives an unbiased and completely quantitative approach to finding the next cities for Major League Baseball expansion. Hi everyone. For those of you who don't know, my name is Sam. I'm the one who runs Century Baseball and I actually wrote the paper that this video is based on as well. Just want to go over a couple of things that this paper that I wrote is actually for academic purposes. So I will not be releasing it to anyone just for the sake of the security of the paper, but it is pretty much to a T what is in this video. Make sure you guys check out the references in the description below as well. That'll be a doc I'll share. 
other than that, if you did enjoy the video, really would appreciate if you guys subscribed, but left a like on the video as well. There is a shocking amount of people who watch the content that are not subscribed. The stat you see on the screen, that's real. That's not me making anything up. Really would appreciate if you guys subscribe. Leave a like on the video and leave a comment as well. I'd love to know what you guys. Surprising conclusion, right? San Jose and Raleigh of all places. It's kind of weird. The study was fun to do and making the video is also really fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. Merry Christmas. It's the 21st today. I know you're not seeing it on the 21st, but have a great day. God bless. Subscribe.